Hi everybody, welcome to the how to make pan de polvo videos. Uh, today we're going to be going over step by step how to make delicious pan de polvo or polvorones. My name is Jane Ballesteros and we're going to be going over these steps today. This recipe was provided by Chef Melissa Guerra and she shared a, a great story with us. This is uh, one of the recipes in, in one of her cookbooks and she shared with us saying that this was actually her grandmother's recipe. So Melissa is Melissa McCallan Guerra. Her grandmother was Margaret McCallan, who was one of the founders of the museum. Uh, so this recipe has been passed down through generations. It's truly South Texas and really delicious too. Okay, so to get started, first you're gonna need some sugar. You're gonna need flour. You're also going to need baking powder, ground cinnamon, and finally, which I don't see, you'll need some cinnamon sticks. Uh, all of these are, is just what you'll need. It's a pretty simple recipe, so we'll get started on the first step. So the first thing you gotta do with those cinnamon sticks that I mentioned is make a tea. This might be a little bit hard to see. It's the big bowl full of tea, but the cinnamon sticks are down in there, and it's really delicious. You wanna make a good amount of it, so just take the full cinnamon stick and brew it. Bring water to a boil, brew them for a little while, approximately about four minutes. Put that on the side and you'll need it later. It's always good to make a little bit extra. It's better to have extra than not to not have enough. Now we're gonna make the dough. What you're gonna do is combine five to six cups of flour, one and a quarter cup of sugar, a tablespoon of ground cinnamon, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, and two and three quarter cups of lard or vegetable shortening. And this is the part that I forgot. I use vegetable shortening. You can also use manteca or lard. <clears throat> if you use vegetable shortening, uh, this is a vegan dish. So just in case you have dietary restrictions, that's another good option. Now you're gonna mix all that up. If you have a hand mixer, uh, I'm sorry, a stand mixer, like a tabletop mixer, that's great. Your hands don't get too sticky. I don't have one at home, so I just use my hands. Uh, and you're gonna get something consistent, kind of like this. This is the dough once everything is combined. Now what you'll wanna do is on a floured surface, so we'll get a little bit of flour, just to show you all. This is important so that the dough doesn't stick and it stays fresh. I'm gonna spread that around, make a little mess right here. You'll get a good amount of dough <clears throat> and you can make these into different shapes. But I generally put it down. I'll flip it on both sides so it has flour. With your rolling pin, you want to flatten it down to be about a quarter inch thick. And you want this to be as consistent as possible because when you bake them, you don't want uh, cookies with different thicknesses. They're going to cook differently. You want to try and have them all be <clears throat> around the same thickness so you can cook them for the right amount of time. <clears throat> now, once you have your dough laid out, you can make fun different shapes. Usually polvorones or pan de polvo, you see them as like little round circles. If you have a cookie cutter, you can make different shapes and designs as well. <clears throat> Usually, oh my gosh, I can find my knife. Usually I'll take a knife, I'll use a spoon for now, and I'll score them into blocks, kind of like this, before slicing them. And once you slice them, you get them into a good shape and you're ready to go. Now you're gonna put these on a baking pan, preheat your oven to, to 350 degrees. Put them on a baking pan, you can use aluminum foil to keep them from sticking and cook them for approximately 10 to 12 minutes. I usually check them just to make sure. You don't want to overcook them. You definitely don't want to undercook them either. Um, but you'll sometimes get that smell. You can smell when it's about to be done. So for example, <clears throat> here are some that I cooked. I baked a little bit earlier. And some of them, a little more cooked. Others, a little less cooked. So you, if there's a little fine line. You wanted them to be golden brown, not maybe too pale. Maybe this one's a little bit undercooked. And, and yeah, there you go. Once you take them out of the oven, let them sit for a little bit. In our talks with Melissa, Melissa Guerra, 
she mentioned that pan de polvo can actually sit for like a whole day. You want it to sit, you want the flavors to get, you know, really, really like set, especially the lard and the vegetable shortening. And that'll give you a delicious pan de polvo. Now, the final step is the topping or the covering. This is very simple. It's just a cup and a half of sugar and a tablespoon of cinnamon. That's going to be a delicious covering that we add to the pan de polvo. Once they sit for a little bit and they cool off just enough, right now they're cold so it won't stick as much, but if they're hot, then you can either add it straight on top or have it on a, on a plate, on a tray, and roll them in there. Especially if you make them into little balls. You can roll them in the sugar and it gives it just a little extra sweet flavor. So really delicious. Thank you to some of my coworkers here, my colleagues. They got to try them and they said that they were pretty good. So uh, hopefully I'll be making this at home and hopefully you as well. Thank you to everyone for joining. 